Escape from Tarkov. Remember this game? I'm sure you do. The game that sparked a big following in the survival shooter scene with its awesome graphics and incredible levels of customization. It's been a while since we discussed the game and more things have been added and updated. We'll start with looking at some new gameplay and then dig into some of the new features. Just before I continue, I have a sponsored message from the guys over at App Bounty. They're a company who reward you with gift cards for Xbox, PSN, Steam and various other platforms simply for downloading and trying free apps. Sounds pretty simple, right? Well, whether you're on Android or iOS, you can take part and get some cool rewards for your time. Just head over to appbounty.net. The link is in the description. Enter the code WESTY with a capital W to get yourself started and download the first offer. App Bounty can be accessed from lots of different places all over the world and you get to pick the rewards. Once you've downloaded the apps and you've got the credits, you can delete the apps as well and save space on your smartphone. Think of it as something that you can do during your dead time, like when you're on the bus to work or any time that you're not watching my videos. Just something there if you want to take part, head over to appbounty.net and use code WESTY to get yourself started. Right then, back to Tarkov. The gameplay in the background is really just a montage of lots of different clips showing off weapons, attachments, weather systems, night combat and night vision as well. The theme is continuing with almost unrivaled levels of customization that we've seen from previous gameplay of Tarkov and that seems to set it out from the rest. Features like being able to crouch, not just at one set height, but multiple heights so that you can look through gaps in fencing or peek over walls. These kind of features are ones we perhaps didn't expect to see, but hopefully will add a lot more interesting gameplay into the final game. Speaking of that huge level of customization in the game, is all of it going to have a massive effect on the gameplay? Are the wooden and metal stocks or different grips for the weapons going to change its characteristics and statistics, or are they just going to be cosmetic items? Well, there are said to be different magazines in the game, which can be fitted to certain weapons, so likely we'll see different sizes of magazine, and that will affect gunfights in that you may have to take cover and reload sooner, or you can burst for longer as you've got more bullets to spare. We know that wood will be heavier than some of the plastic variants of attachments that you can put on your weapon, so there may be a chance that you'll move slower should your weapon weigh more. The majority of the customization, however, will be cosmetic. Most of the options will be there to make your weapons look different from anyone else's, and in many cases, you will have a unique weapon. This kind of customization will allow you to sort of go round and spend hours searching for cool attachments to make your weapon feel different from everyone else's, and that gives the game a lot more longevity, allowing players to scavenge around, collect cool loot, and be their own player in the game. There are, of course, missions you need to complete to unlock new areas, and different areas will have different loot that you can collect. There should be a nice mix between gameplay and completing missions, and then going free roam to collect cool stuff. Now though, let's get on to the trading. There are a few brief seconds of the trading system in the gameplay as well, and it shows at least the layout for it. It looks daunting from the outset, but I've had a good look at it, and I think I understand it well enough now. Be aware, this is all literally taken from five seconds of on-screen footage, so really, I'm taking a lot of this at face value, but it still gives us quite a bit of insight into what the devs at Battlestate have created when it comes to trading in Escape from Tarkov. First off, this screen here. You can see there are three different tabs at the top. You've got Dealers, Flea Market, and Auctions. Now, I have no information on how the Flea Market or Auctions will work. There's no footage of those systems here, but the next few frames will give us a look at the Dealers. Below, you can see there are two available to deal with at the moment. 
One of them appears to be a placeholder, and the other is Pavel Romanenko. He's been chosen, and you can see on the right-hand side there are some icons that give you high-level categories of things that you should be able to get from him. Health, guns, storage, food, ammunition, and more. Below that, you'll see there's a tick next to the buy category, meaning he will buy items off of you for in-game currency. There's also a description on the left-hand side next to the portrait, giving you some background as to who this guy is and what he's done in the past. The description actually links into the Contract Wars universe. That's a game previously made by the devs at Battlestate, who are also making Escape from Tarkov. The two games are somewhat linked. Moving on to the actual trading screen now, you can see in the top left-hand corner that the Buy tab is highlighted, and the player has selected an AK-74N to purchase from the dealer. Below the item in the centre of the screen, you'll see that currently the player doesn't have enough money to purchase the item, which is unfortunate, but if we then focus on the top right of the screen, we can see three values. Dollars, Euros, and Rubles. These appear to be the in-game currencies used, and this AK-74N costs 56,994 rubles to buy. With there being three currencies, will we be seeing different nationalities of traders in the game who will only trade with you if you have their currency? Or perhaps it depends on the origin of the weapons, either they're Russian, European or American, you have to use the native currency to buy those weapons? This all remains open for debate, but it's certain that this is another layer to the gameplay here in Tarkov. If you have to go around looting for different types of currency or going to different traders to boost your currency over another, that could be a really interesting gameplay mechanic. Let's say you wanted an American weapon but only had Russian attachments in your stash. You might have to go and trade those in and somehow convert the currency over. I mean, at the moment, there is no information and I am just speculating. But this kind of layer of integration is something we haven't really seen before in a survival game. It is worth noting that this is pre-alpha as well, so take it with a pinch of salt, but overall the buying system seems pretty simple. The selling screen appears to be very similar, but for clarity we'll look at it anyway, dragging items from the right hand side of your screen from your stash into the centre will start this activation of a deal. Here we have some sort of magazine fed shotgun with two magazines as well, and if you look at the top of the screen, you'll see those items will equal a total in rubles again. You can then confirm that deal and cash in those items to the dealer and you'll get your currency in return. Overall, at this time, the system looks nice and easy to navigate, but there are a lot of details still on this screen that don't make much sense without context. Battlestate haven't gone into detail with how this trading system will work in Tarkov yet, whether there are trader locations on the map, or if it's just contained to an in-game menu. But for sure, it looks like a proper, fleshed-out system where any item you pick up in the world will have some sort of value to a trader. And you can then use those items to gain other parts for your weapons, perhaps. Maybe you need some ammunition or even health kits in case you get hurt during combat. All looks very interesting, and I can't wait to get some more information on it when Battlestate decide to release some. So, Tarkov again showing off some serious depth to the gameplay and the universe that it's set in, which makes me even more excited to get my hands on this at some point. It is still worth noting that yet again, all of this footage and all the information is pre-alpha and is subject to change at the drop of a hat. So don't go thinking this is what the final game will be like when it finally releases, but this gives you a rough idea of what you can expect from Escape from Tarkov. I'll have another video coming up later this week, in fact. I want to discuss the authenticity of Tarkov a little bit more and get your opinions on that, so look out for it. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.